Hello children, today's class is on the chapter financing and the topic we are going to take is banking and its latest trend. It's a very important chapter as in this chapter you are going to get an idea about the debit cards, the credit cards, the ATM, mobile banking, NEFT, RTGS and other banking related topics. The chapter includes the following RTGS, NEFT, e-banking, mobile banking, SMS alerts, debit cards, credit cards, ATM, demand draft. But in today's class, we will be taking the first three topics, RTGS, NEFT and e-banking. The first topic is RTGS. RTGS stands for Real-Time Gross Settlement. It's a fund transfer method under which you can transfer fund from one bank account to another bank account on real-time and gross basis. What does this mean that? Suppose you are having a bank account in State Bank of India, Shodhpur, and you want to transfer fund to one of your friend who stays maybe in Delhi, Mumbai or any other place in the country. What you can do with the help of RTGS, you can transfer fund from your bank account to your friend's account on a real time and gross basis. You can see the two term real time and gross basis are made bold. So what does real time means? Real time means no waiting period, which means that the moment you go to the bank to transfer the fund, your transaction is processed immediately. You do not need to wait hours to get the transaction settled or to make the transfer. Rather, your transfer is made immediately. And gross basis means one to one basis, means your transaction is settled individually without bunching it with other transaction. So what is RTGS? It's a fund transfer method under which you can transfer fund from one bank account to another bank account on a real time and gross basis. Real time means no waiting period. Immediately the transfer takes place and gross basis means that one to one basis. Individually your transaction is being settled. Next is the features of RTGS. Available only in a CBS enabled bank. It means that all the banks in order to give the RTGS facility must be CBS enabled. Now the question arises what is CBS enabled? CBS stands for core banking solution which means networking of bank branches which enables customers to operate their account and avail banking services from any branch of the bank on CBS network regardless of where or he or she maintain his or her account. That is, all the banks are interlinked, interconnected with each other. And when you are having an account in one particular branch, that does not mean that you are the customer of that particular branch. Rather, you become the customer of the bank. You can operate your account from any branch of the bank. Since the banks are interlinked and interconnected with each other. So, in order to give the RTGS facility, the bank must be CBS enabled. Next, transactions are processed individually and continuously, which means that the transactions are processed individually and continuously means real time and gross basis. In the previous slide, we have discussed about this, that without any waiting period, your transactions are settled and it's not being clubbed or bunched with other transactions, it is processed individually. Next, minimum amount of transfer is 2 lakh. So, in order to make RTGS, the minimum amount is 2 lakh. However, there is no limit for maximum amount of transfer. That is, there is no upper selling. And the last point, transfer is final and irrevocable. Irrevocable means it cannot be changed, reverse or recover. Means once you make the transfer, you cannot cancel your transfer. So this is all about RTGS. So what is RTGS? Point 1, it's a fund transfer system. Point 2, where you can make a transfer on gross basis and on real time. Which means, real time means no waiting period. Gross basis means one to one basis. Features, the bank has to be CBS enabled. Minimum amount is 2 lakh, no maximum limit and transaction once done, it is final and irrevocable. Next is NEFT. 
NEFT stands for National Electronic Fund Transfer. It is also a nationwide payment system under which you can transfer fund from one bank account to another bank account. Similar to RTGS, NEFT is also a fund transfer method. But here, the transaction takes place in batches. Now, what is batches? Batches means transfers takes place in a particular period of time, not continuously. All transfers are held till that time, which means that the, there are certain slots where NEFT is being conducted. And all the transactions which comes, all the clients who come to do NEFT in between that slot are clubbed together and then their transactions are being conducted. So NEFT, National Electronic Fund Transfer, it is also a fund transfer method where you can transfer fund from one bank account to another bank account, but here transactions are being settled in batches. Features of NEFT. Number one, bank branch must be NEFT enabled. That is, in order to give the NEFT facility, the bank must have the facility, the, it ha must have the provision of NEFT. Next, to receive fund, must, one must have an account with the NEFT enabled bank. This means that if you are a receiver of the fund, then you must have an account with a NEFT enabled bank. But in point three, you can see if a person does not have an account, he can also make a transfer. Without having an account, you can make any, a payment. But in that ground, the maximum amount that can be transferred is 49,999. And no minimum or maximum limit of fund transfer for those who have an account. Point two, three, four are very important. First is that to receive the fund, you do not need to have an account. Point three, it's, it's saying that you can make a transfer with NEFT even if you don't have a bank account. But in that case, there is a limit. You can transfer only up to 49,999. But if you have an account, then there will be no restriction on the minimum and the maximum amount of fund transfer. Next is transactions takes place in batches. That is, it is not settled continuously. Rather, it is done in batches. The sender has to pay charges for the fund. Means the one who is sending the money has to make a NEFT charges to the bank. The last point, the receiver of the fund don't need to pay any charges. That is the one who is receiving the fund, receiving the money. He or she do not need to make any kind of payment to the bank to receive the fund. So this is all about NEFT. It's a fund transfer method. Here, the transactions are being settled in batches. But the bank must be NEFT enabled bank. Next, to receive the fund, you must have an account. But however, you might make a, you may make a payment with a help of NEFT, even if you don't have an account. But in that case, maximum amount is 49,999. But if you have an account, then there will be no minimum or maximum limit of transfer. Transactions takes place in batches. Sender of the fund has to pay a charges to the bank. However, receiver do not need to make any kind of payment. So let's take a summary of what we have done in RTGS and NEFT. Both RTGS and NEFT are fund transfer system. But in RTGS, transactions are processed individually and continuously. Whereas in F NEFT, it is settled in batches. In RTGS, there's a minimum transaction value is 2 lakh. However, there is no minimum limit for NEFT. So NEFT, RTGS, both are fund transfer method. So next topic we are going to take is e-banking. What does e-banking? E-banking means electronic banking. Electronic means banking means banking transactions carried out with the help of a computer or a mobile phone. Any user having a computer or a mobile phone 
having an internet connection and a browser can access the bank website and avail the banking services. It means that with the help of your computer or a mobile phone, which is having an internet connection, you can avail all the banking services by sitting at your own residence or office. You do not need to physically visit the bank in order to do your banking transaction. You can see that the three term computer, mobile phone, internet are being made italics, which means that in order to have an e-banking, you need to have one device. It can be either a computer or a mobile phone. And both the device, you must be connected to internet. So once it's being connected to your internet, you can log into the bank's website and you can avail all the banking services. In place of computer and mobile phones, it, uh, it's or any of the devices can help you. You can do the banking services online. But all you need to have is an internet connection. The word internet connection is very, very important because without internet connection, you cannot log into the bank website. Features of e-banking. Number one, no face-to-face -face contact between the bank and the client. Since you do not physically visit the bank branch, so there is no face-to-face -face interaction or contact between you and your bank branch. Next, both the parties need computer or mobile phone having an internet connection. In order to conduct the e-banking process, in order to do banking online, you need to have either a computer or a mobile phone with an internet connection. The client has to give e-banking option to the bank. Means that you need to visit the bank branch and you need to click on the option net banking or internet banking facility has to be linked with your account. And the last point, the bank staff and the client must understand e-banking technology. Yes, while doing e-banking, there are various method, uh, methods, process, steps are involved to conduct the transaction. So the bank as well as the client must understand how to operate the e-banking facility. So e-banking, it's a method by which you can avail the banking services with the help of your computer or a mobile phone having a internet connection. You log into the bank's website and you can access all the banking services. Next topic is advantages of e-banking. The advantages of e-banking are categorized into two categories. That is advantages it provides to the customer and advantages it provides to the bank. So first we will deal with the advantages it provides to the customer. Number one, customer gets 24 hour and 365 days service, which means that see, while we physically visit a bank and do the banking transaction, it is restricted during the banking hours, like 10 to five, alternate Saturdays, Sundays are closed, all these limitations are there. But when you are operating with the help of e-banking, there is no such restriction. 24 hour, you get the service. Next, they can make the transactions from residence or office. Means you do not need to physically visit the bank in order to do the transaction. Right from your home or from your office, you can avail the service. Next point, recording of each transaction inculcates a sense of financial discipline, which means that Generally, you see that when we are conducting or when we are doing any transaction with cash, liquid cash, what we do, we are making payments, we are receiving money, we do not keep on writing or we don't keep on recording that 2000 has been received, 500 has been paid. But often we tend to not to record it. But when we are doing an online transaction, when we are operating e-banking, everything is being recorded. All the transactions are being recorded, which automatically maintains a complete record of the amount of payments and the receipts you are doing with your account. Next is the no risk of carrying cash. Usually we fear to ca carry a huge amount of cash when we go on travel, when we go out to other cities. So here we, we might think it might get lost, theft, others. So in this case, what is happening? If you are having an e-banking facility, Automatically, you do not need to carry cash. All the transactions you can do online. Unlimited access to the bank increases customer's satisfaction. It means that 
once you log in to the bank's website you can see that there are various services which you can opt you can open an rd you can open a fixed deposits you can make payments you can view your account everything you can do by sitting at your home automatically it increases your satisfaction so these are the advantages of e banking with to the customer now what advantages it's provide to the bank point 1 gains a competitive advantage the banks they get a competitive advantage which means that see nowadays people prefer to do the banking transaction sitting at home rather than physically visiting the bank so those banks who cannot provide e banking facility are not preferred by many customers so automatically the banks who are providing such services are getting a advantage over the banks who are not being able to provide the custom the customers with e banking facility next network of the bank is not limited to the number of branches rather it expands far and wide that means that it is not restricted to a particular number of branch rather e banking it connects to all the branches and it expands far and wide and the last topic centralized database reduces load on the branches which means that since everything is being loaded and centralized all the database are stored online so automatically it reduces the workload of the branches the bank branches do not need to keep maintaining each and every transaction physically rather it keeps a record everything online even we can say that the customers they since they get all the services online they do not keep on visiting the branches so automatically the load of the branches is getting reduced so these are the advantages of e banking with every advantage come certain disadvantages so today's last topic is the disadvantages of e banking the first point both the bank and the client must or have to invest money in the e banking technology yes in order to get the e banking technology you have to invest some money because you need technology you need a computer or a mobile phone internet connections so you have to invest money to get e banking technology which is not always possible for every client next training in technology is needed for both the parties that is how to operate the e banking technology if you are not aware of it if you do not know how to do it then you cannot avail the services so you need a training or you need an idea a knowledge of how to operate the e banking facility next client may not be able to transact due to defect or virus in technology sometimes due to link failure or due to some virus or some problem in the technology it might happen your transaction might get declined so in that case the client will not be able to conduct e banking and the last an oversight error on the part of the bank or client can be harmful means one mistake you do it can lead to a big error for example you want to transfer 5000 rupees 5 with 000 but instead of triple zero by mistake you have uh, clicked four zeros so automatically one on one click instead of 5000 50000 amount is being transferred so you have to be very careful while making e banking transaction so that's all for today so in this class we have discussed about the rtgs neft e banking so in the next class we are going to take the all the other topics so children please stay home stay safe we'll be back again with the next topic